Okay, so here's what you get when you order the um, kit from Hobby King. And if you cut open the plastic, uh, there's all the bits and pieces. Okay, these are all the bits and pieces needed for the wing. Uh, now, with the ribs, the uh, or with the wing, the idea is you're supposed to build it as a one-piece wing with no ailerons and then cut the ailerons out. I uh, thought that idea sucked, so what I did was I cut all the ribs at the point where the ailerons are supposed to be and built the wing without the ailerons and then just got some trailing edge section from a hobby shop and use that for the ailerons. I just thought that was a hell of a lot easier. The other thing is uh, the instructions, the English instructions is absolutely dire, but one of the things they talk about is the wing ribs at the root being twice as thick as the other ribs, but they don't, all the wing ribs they supply are all the same thickness. So what I did was I scanned two of them in on a scanner, printed out the scan, glued it on a piece of balsa twice as thick and made my own ribs, basically. So there you can see my replacement ribs all cut out. And you can see there, they're the edge of the wing spars, and you can see that the top one, the little area for the root wing rib, is twice as thick as the bottom one, which is the little area for the um, wingtip wing rib. So they do actually expect the root wingtip to be twice as thick. I don't think it really matters. You could probably just use the thinner one and then just cut off the protruding balsa, but I thought, what the heck. Right, and there you can see the, the supplied uh, wingtip rib on the spar on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, the one I made for the wing root. All right, so no plans. I, I just use greaseproof paper, and that seemed to work pretty good to, on top of the foam. Um, it all slots together, and then all you need to do is pin everything down and make sure everything's at right angles. So you could measure diagonals from the trailing edge to the wing spar, or, or use a tri-square, whatever works for you. But just make sure everything's pinned down and everything's flat and everything's square, and then shove your glue on. Okay, there's another shot with, you can just see the white. I, I just use PVA glue uh, because I had it. Um, it's pretty light, it's pretty strong, seems to do the job. Right, so there's the two wings, uh, wing spars and ribs and trailing edge all glued on ready. At this point they're still pretty flippy floppy. Now they're both glued together. Now I did make one modific a number of modifications and the first one being instead of using the supplied balsa spars I went and got some spruce the same size. And the supplied balsa spars are the length of one wing panel, not the length of the entire wing. So I thought I'd get some extra strength by having one piece running from wingtip to wingtip. So basically, that's what I did. Okay, and there you can see uh, the other side. And yet another shot of the wings. Okay, and that's the uh, same thing I did underneath. Instead of using the, the two supplied lower balsa spars, I replaced them with one long piece of spruce. I'm not saying it's not strong enough using the stuff that's supplied. It probably is, but I'm a bit paranoid that way. Okay, speaking of paranoia, I've only ever scratch-built two other balsa planes, but both of them, in addition to the wing spar, had another spar halfway between the wing spar and the trailing edge. So I thought I'd add one. Again, probably overkill, but what the heck. And, of course, what did I, I actually used the supplied main spar balsa for this spar. Okay, and there you can see I've glued on the leading edge. Now, I couldn't use the balsa supply for the leading edge because it was a it was about 5mm too short for some weird reason, so I just cut some from balsa stock that I had. Okay, and so that's another shot showing the, the wing spars, uh, the leading edge balsa, sorry, glued on. Make sure you've got plenty of glue there because it's not a very strong kind of wooden join, so you want it to, to bond and not come away, especially if you're using CA. Okay, same problem with the um, balsa for the wing panels. 
Uh, one of them was the right size, the one you're looking at. All the rest were just a tad too short. So again, I had to use my own balsa. Now, very important. At this point, the wing is still very flippy floppy and all of that. As soon as you start putting these balsa panels on the top and bottom of the wing, that's when it gets rigid. So not only do you want to pin the wing down before you do this, you want to make sure the wing is dead flat. Otherwise, this is going to land you with a, with a twisted wing. And there's both sides glued on. And yet another shot with everything sort of trimmed off, ready for sanding. And now I've got the, the trailing edge uh, thing. Um, and because I didn't use the... I'm using trailing edge stock. I, again, I had to cut my own bits for that. Okay, and this is using the supplied um, sort of capping across the, the wing ribs. Note, I left them off the center ribs because there's going to be an entire balsa panel covering that entire center section. Uh, that's both sides of the top done. And uh, that's the leading and trailing edge wing panels glued on to the bottom. And again, you need to make sure the wing is flat and square. Now, flat and square the other way around was easy because the bottom of the wing section is flat. Now it's a little bit harder because the top of the wing is obviously curved. What I did was I, I anchored the trailing edge hard against the foam and then used that sort of flat part before the main spar and kept it flat along that section and that seemed to do the trick. And if you look carefully, you can see a lot of the pins holding the panelling down on the leading edge actually go all the way through the wing and into the foam, just to make sure it's all kept flat. Because at this point, this is when the wing starts being all stiff. So we don't want to twist. Because that, there's, when you get to covering, that's likely to happen anyway, and this is just going to make things worse. Okay, that's just another shot of the same thing. You can see on the left the trailing edge stock that I bought to use for the ailerons. Now the wing tips were a bit of an issue because I wanted to get to have them running down the end of the middle of the wing rib but also obviously I wanted them horizontally and you can't actually have both so in the end it was a bit of a compromise. Um, and the little gussets you more or less have to cut yourself but no big deal. Alright and now you see the uh, centre section panels added and the little servo trays added. I didn't put them exactly where um, the instructions told me to, but you know that's the thing with a scratch build, you can, you can vary things. I wanted to keep the distance between the servo and the aileron shorter, so I put them closer to the trailing edge basically. Okay, and that's just a close-up shot. Uh, and that's the uh, covering of the centre section of the top of the wing. Okay, I decided before I went on to the fuselage that I, I, I hate putting on heat shrink, so I thought I'll bite the bullet and do the wing first. And I decided I, I was going to use a colour scheme of silver wings and red fuselage. Um, the silver, I, know, I was a bit worried how that would go. The heat shrink's Hobby King stuff, and it went on smooth as pie on the bottom of the wing. And that's a shot, you can see the heat shrink underneath. Uh, I decided to put the servos in and thread them through before I covered the top of the wing. I know I could have had little bits of thread and all of that, but I thought, why not? You know, it just makes things easier. And that's the top of the wing. Now, that's my second attempt. The first attempt was a total disaster. And you can see even in this one, I've purposely arranged it. So if you look in the centre section, you can see all this kind of tarnishing. That's because I had some massive wrinkles there and I really had to lean on the heating iron to straighten them out. And being the second attempt, I sure as hell wasn't going to do a third attempt. So this was going to work or I was going to die. In the end, it doesn't look too bad. And if you put it in normal light, it doesn't stand out that much. I found with the, this Hobby King heat shrink that you can use a lot of heat on it, but initially you've got to turn the heat down. And that's what happened. I started off on a low heat with the bottom of the wing 
and then obviously turned it up to get the wrinkles out and forgot to turn it down again when I started the top of the wing so then everything was sort of shriveling up when it shouldn't and it was only after I finished that I realized my mistake. Okay, so um, this is a shot of the completed wing and you can see I've done the ailerons as well. All right, the rudder and tail plane are pretty simple. I did have to trim things a little bit just to keep things um, perfectly fitting, mostly on that bottom piece on the rudder. It was a very minor thing. And there's the fuselage starting to come together. Now, very important with those formers is make sure they are at right angles to the side of the fuselage. Uh, use a tri-square or cut a little right-angled piece of balsa wood, whatever, but just make sure they're square. Uh, and that's a close-up. Okay, now, that was my way of making sure I had the fuselage straight. Now, the thing is, you'll notice the back of the fuselage is being held together with a peg. Uh, you don't glue it like that. I, I just held it like that because I wanted to make sure it hit the center of the ruler and therefore the entire fuselage was straight. And that's another shot. Um, I did screw up the, the motor mount a little bit. That ended up a teeny touch crooked, but never mind. Not too much to cause any trouble. But there's the nose all together. And that's how the rear of the fuselage goes together. So you see the two sides don't come together. There's a little rectangular shape rear section. There's the servo tray in for the rudder and elevator and that's the main structure of the fuselage assembled. I didn't like the idea of resting the wing on those skinny light ply fuselage sides so I, I cut some bits of balsa to suit to glue next to them like that because I thought um, you know, that gives a little bit of area maybe that with the rubber bands pushing down, it won't push the wing in. Was that paranoia? Probably, but I thought, what the hell. Okay, that's the top decking and the bottom decking um, glued on. That actually fit pretty well and went on pretty easy, really. Okay, I came up with the idea with the top and bottom hatches of taking the light ply that um, fell out of the fuselage to make the hatch openings, sanding it down a little bit and then gluing it onto the hatch as a way of locating the hatch in the right position. I thought that was a pretty neat idea and it worked pretty well. And there you can see the bottom hatch in position and the top hatch in position. And that's the same thing only from the outside. Okay, now the fuselage is all covered up. Um, and as I said, I used red. And that's the same thing, but a shot from the bottom. Now, I made a, a mission there that I had to go back and fix right at the end, but we'll come back to that. Okay, that's gluing the tail plane on. Now, one thing I didn't do here was I didn't make sure the tail plane was perfectly horizontal, and in the end, I actually had to cut it off, fix that, and glue it back. Luckily, because I used PVA glue, I could do that without wrecking everything. Okay, and there's the wheels. Now the undercarriage is ridiculously low. Um, I thought I should bend a new one, but I didn't have any piano wire, so I got stingy. And what I did was I just made, bent it narrower, which gave me a little bit more height. But what I intend to do is actually replace it. Also don't like the dinky toy yellow wheels, so I might replace them with something a little more blingy. Okay, so there you can see the rudder on and the wing just resting in position. There's the rudder and elevator servos in place. And you can see the rudder and elevator servo push rods uh, sticking out the back. I had to bend them a bit to get them in the right position once they exited the fuselage. But that was okay. There's the aileron servos all hooked up to the ailerons. Uh, another shot, you can see how I've bent the wire so that they're going to hit the tail plane and the rudder at appropriate places. And there's the rudder and elevator control horns fitted and everything hooked up. The control horns are a bit sort of bendy, but they look quite strong, so I think they'll be fine. So there's the basic airframe fully assembled, with the exception of sorting out how to hold the hatches on. 
With the mode amount, uh, I went on RC groups and most people agreed you need about five degrees down thrust. So those nuts and the top bolt having two washers in the nut are the spaces you need to get that five degrees down thrust. And that's the motor on. That prop uh, is too big and I changed it for a slightly smaller one later, but it's not really important. Now, this is the modification. There's no, there's two holes in the front to let air in, but there's nowhere for the air to go out. So I cut two holes in the bottom and then had to, um, you know, bend the heat shrink over and that was difficult to do neatly given that the fuselage was already assembled and there are access issues, but in the end I managed it. And there you can see from the other side, and you can see they're not perfectly square and I'm a bit upset about that, but never mind. You can also see on the left, um, they, Hobby King supplied magnets with the kit to hold hatches on, and that one's impossible to lift out from the outside with the magnets, so what I did was I just put in a bit of satay stick that you can pull on, and that seems to work good. I thought the tail plane was, the wood in the tail plane was a little bit kind of bendy, so I sliced it open and slipped in a bit of carbon fibre. Again, probably overkill, but makes me feel better and doesn't really add to the weight. And that's the finished dude, sitting there all ready for her maiden flight. And here's another shot. And that's how she goes together. So I hope that helps you put yours together. I found it a hell of a lot of fun, and I think you will too.